Welcome back to Desert Wood Days, and I am here with Mr. Timothy Boadel. Thank you so well, much. Welcome. Thank you so much, and, and thank you for having me. I'm uh, just enjoying watching your team work, so I really appreciate this opportunity. It's such a pleasure. Thank it's you. such a pleasure. And thanks for bringing your young man here with yeah, you. Yeah, he's my sidekick, of yes, course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Timothy, are you feeling like you're rude today? Oh, rude all day long. <laughs> When did you decide that you um, want to be a wardrobe stylist? Um, you know what? It came when I was younger, uh, probably my son's age, so like 12, 13 years old. I uh, just started going through shopping for, for myself when mm -hmm. I started to get some money uh, and saw that these brands were just something, there was something of a lack mm -hmm. that, I, that I think I wanted for myself. Uh, so that's kind of where I developed that eye for a, a, a certain taste. Where, where were, where were, you, where were you raised? Um, so majority of life, my life I spent here. So I went to college here, high school here. In Arizona. Uh, in Arizona, but oh, okay. I was born in Germany. Oh, okay. uh, Military brat, okay. moved around a lot. So you saw a lot of different types of styles. A lot and, of culture, a lot yes. of style, a lot of color, a lot of um, you know ethnicities. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, what was funny though, in, you know, in Germany, even though you're in another country you're just with a lot of American other kids because they're in the same boat. Right, right. <laughs> but you do see a lot of different types of things, and that that just kind of comes along with things uh, as you get older. And, and you know what? As a wardrobe stylist, it's nice to be able to have that culture. Oh, to, yeah. To be able to mix those different um, patterns yes. and um, materials together because a lot of people, I mean, they're born and raised one place. That's, that's all they know. And, because they only know what we get here. Mm -hmm. So that's all they see. I feel like it's almost to like your advantage, uh, just for the fact that if you uh, study your customer, your client, um, and they are from someplace else, mm -hmm. you need to understand where they're from so that you right. can see what kind of style they're from. Right. Uh, my job and is to- And not assume. Yeah. Just because they're, not from, assume. they're from Germany or from somewhere else. Yeah. That, they want to look that way. They may be here in Arizona and want to have a different style. So that is it's correct. all about communicating. That is correct. Um, a lot of my clientele are professionals. Uh, so, you know, they do TV like yourself. Uh, they're in front of many people at a time doing speeches. So it's always this one look we're always trying to accomplish. Right. Uh, but there are the times where they want to attack their wardrobe. So for their personal style. Right. So that's where it gets a little challenging. But that's the fun part. Right. You know. Right, and that's where you come in. That's right. I mean, because that's why they pay me. That's, that's right. <laughs> You're also a podcaster. That's right. Okay, but we're going to get into that a little yeah, later. Cool. Can you tell me about the first time you styled someone? Um, you know, if it wasn't myself, it was actually probably just amongst friends. And, and I think that's kind of where I found that this could be lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, I started off as a designer uh, when I was younger. Like I mentioned before, when you asked me that question, I wanted to be a designer. I knew I wanted to be one. I went through my entire school saying, this is what I was going to do. But you know what? Um, it's, it's very hard to stay ahead of the curve in designing. Right, you right. know, it's, it's a lot of long nights of, uh, if Carrie was here, I would say writer's block. In this right. case, designer block. Right. And of if, course. Yeah, if you, if you get that, then you're stuck and you're just waiting around until something just kicks you in the butt. And you wait around, you have this thought in your mind, but you don't waited so long then all of a sudden you see something like that was what i was kind of i was do. about to just say that <laughs> you wait long enough and you're gonna see it on the tv in yes. a magazine on now and then social media is even faster yes. so it, it's just much more easier to take someone else's uh brand and and, and mix and, and mesh it and make it yours and and well and not mine per se but just this look mm -hmm. you know and then they can say like you know what that's more of tim's style Right. I wonder if he did that. And sure enough, they're going to see a tag somewhere. Uh -huh. That was Tim that did that. That is true. Yeah. I, and I tell you that I've seen that and I've 
purchase items uh -huh. from someone and um then um, you think, oh, this is their 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 look, their style, yeah. and um, you know sometimes it. I mean, this is a designer that mm -hmm. have higher rates. Sure. Then you go and you see the same look at a consignment store somewhere yeah. that's like half the price. You're like, <laughs> well, I will say this, and and uh, one of the some of the questions that you had sent me for this for pre production, I was looking at them like you know, the brands that you've seen from years ago. The designers of those brands, those major brands, Louis uh -huh. Vuitton and, and Christian uh -huh. Dior, they have hired, you know, creatives like myself to further the brand. Right. And those creatives jump from brand to brand to brand. Right. So Dior used to work at Louis Vuitton. So as you go down the line, uh, Kim Jones is who I'm referring to, uh -huh. uh, which is one of my favorite type of uh, uh, person to follow. Uh, he has this certain knack for streetwear and style and when when he, he puts it on a major brand like this you're just like oh wow it's a clash of culture it's amazing so it's mm -hmm. kind of like what i do right. you know just yeah. on a different scale and you know what and, and that's why you are so important also in the entertainment industry oh yeah okay so sure. just thinking about on a film set the the director has an idea Costume of who designer how they want this character to look That's right. what type of style where the it is it's not about the character it's about that whole bio on that character yeah where they're from they're from louisiana okay you get to know that vibe and what that person would dress like so it yeah. takes a lot of work and you know the ordinary person ain't got time for all that <laughs> <laughs> they're just like i want to i know i want to look this way so I'm going to go to Timothy. That's right. Um, you know, when I go and look at uh, just a, a great movie, show, what have you, I'm looking at the credits and finding out who mm. the costume designer is because right. I want to credit them when I take a picture of that and say, right. like, amazing work, applaud right. you. Because you don't get that That's down true. the line. You know, the, the, the people behind the scenes don't get the credit like they should. And they should. They, they definitely should because uh, that leads to more jobs for them that is down the true. line. And I tell you, I applaud my wardrobe person every time I post a picture, okay? Because I come on set, yeah. I don't have to worry about what I'm wearing. It's yeah. already picked it's out, picked labeled, out. Yeah. and whatever else, yeah. whatever the theme that we did. Um, I mean, just the different shows we've done. I don't have to worry about that. You give them full autonomy. They know yes. exactly what, what you're going to be feeling like. And you have to trust like. them. That's right. That's, it, it's really built on trust, and that can sound so cliche, but it is built on trust. It sure is. So we're talking about um, wardrobe styling, um, mm -hmm. styling for the industry, because this is an entertainment show. That's right. So um, you're also in the industry, also with from the point of you have a podcast that you work on. I do, yeah. We started, uh, we're about 22 months in. Uh, episode 42, we just dropped recently. That's on all streaming platforms, um, and as well as YouTube. And it's been doing very well, especially through 2020 mm -hmm. uh, when we weren't doing anything right. um, mostly. So, um, you know, we talk uh, current events mm -hmm. just like anybody else uh, to, you know, bring the audience in. We talk, um, you know, sports, music, whichever. But I think our meat and potatoes, mm -hmm. as we so call it, is dating, mm -hmm. uh, relationships, yes. marriage, children, uh, parenting. Uh, we tackle those types of topics, mm -hmm. and that's where we get the most response. And you know what? During the time of COVID, that's what you saw a lot of. Because oh, you know yeah. what? The thing is, people were spending a lot of time together. Together, yeah. <laughs> they realized they didn't <laughs> right. want to be together. Right. Which is strange. Or they but... realized that they were lonely. Yes. 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 They needed it, some it, companionship. It goes both ways. Yeah. So that worked out. And meshing the two together, being a wardrobe stylist and being a podcaster, do you have a role of making sure that it all looks the way it should be or the style is there for the show? Uh, yes. So, I mean, just the aesthetic of the show, uh, you know, we all have creative uh, direction. Uh, there's three of us. So it's just all equally shared. So it's a little tough when you have partners to mm -hmm. get your point out on what you want, but you right. have input. I'm sure, you know, as, as ownership of this show, you have some sort of input. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's the point where we have to agree on things. Right. But hopefully but your, idea, hopefully your idea yeah. shines, shines out. But right. you, you do have to give and take and trust your partners. Right. 
tell us a little bit about your partners of the yeah. show. Um, well, first, tell us what's the name of the show. So, Podcast Caviar oh. um, is um, again on all streaming platforms, including YouTube. Um, we we probably dish one out every two weeks at this point, and um, uh, my partner Latroy mm -hmm. and my partner Sylvia. Uh, and then we have a videographer that comes in as well. Uh, that's our small team of people. Okay. And uh, Latroy's a model. Uh, uh, and he has a, a, a business of himself, and then uh, Sylvia as well has a business as well, okay. other than podcasting. Okay. Are is either of you guys married? None of us. I was married. Okay. Um, they are not married, for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're getting a little bit of um, advice and opinions from all sides. One, someone oh, yeah. that's been, a mar yep. been married, okay, and single people. Yep. Uh, we are all, uh, I could say confidently, we are all dating. Um, I don't think anybody is serious about or companions uh, that I can think of, <laughs> but um, I'll have to speak that for myself. Yeah, because them companions might be thinking something else. <laughs> <than you should. laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it, that's um, that's a great question, and um, I... so you brought some media for us to. Um, I did. Yes. So why don't we take a look Wonderful. at your pictures yeah, yeah. today? Great. And you can tell us what we have. For sure, yeah. So this was done at, the, we kind of stumbled across this location venue. So it's right outside Sky Harbor. I don't want to oh. give too much detail because then you'll see a lot of photos of right. people using it. Um, it's just at a terminal. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a model that I've used probably for the last six, seven years. Okay. Really dear friend of mine, Bokar. And, oh, um, I know him. You know him? Great. Yes. So Bokar and I have been friends for quite some time. And uh, he just fits everything I have in my uh, in my uh, inventory right. so well. So, uh, you know, his schedule permits everything that I do. So uh, as you see, he just wears everything quite well. And anything that I have, he normally buys it because he's like, oh, this looks great. Let me just- And you know what? <laughs> he has the, the, the body structure for this type of model also. 1,000%. Yes, he does. He's, he's that. I've never seen him, I've never seen a bad picture of him. At all. No. And even <laughs> if you take a candy picture, just like, are you posing? <laughs> oh, no, I'm eating right now. Oh, okay. I thought it was a commercial. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, this one here, uh, another two friends of mine, um, uh, Alexis and Martel, uh, both of them models. I know, um, I know Martel. Wonderful. Yeah. You know Martel. So you he know, has his own business little, as well. I think the first time Martel modeled was in one of my shows. Oh, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Ask him about that's that. How, that's how kind of I met him as well. So he modeled for uh, my show like 2015. And we've been friends ever since as well. I think Alexis looks familiar too. Martel is also a bodybuilder. Um, yep. he, does, he has his yeah. own gym on yeah. 16th Street in Camelback. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, he is doing like NPC type uh, things, yeah. if you're familiar with that. Um, and uh, look, that was it a might, it might not look like, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this last one, we partnered, this was for Phoenix Fashion Week. Uh, this was a show maybe 2016, 2017. Uh, this was for, we partnered with Goodwill, oh. uh, which I do quite yes. often. Um, the marketing that. team over there is, uh, is phenomenal, Gene Watson. And um, and I love that pop of orange, I do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of the idea. Uh, it was just kind of muted colors and then just that pop of orange. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the uh, theme of some of the other looks. And that's sometimes, that's all you need, a simple pop of color. As that's, you see. Yes, yeah. that's all that's you need sometimes. Yeah. Yes. But thank you. Yeah, those are those are awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome models, awesome um, designs. I really love it. So um, what's next for um, Timothy? Um, you know, I was, I, I, I'd like to keep mentioning him. Carrie on the way out, I asked him for, we can exchange information okay. because uh, I had began a novel. Not oh. a novel, I'm sorry, I take that back. I began a book. Okay. Um, and um, it's kind of in the, the beginning stages. And uh, it, it's been very interesting. A friend of mine had turned me on to creating a book and writing this. So that's where I'm at. Oh, and cool. um, podcasting, being behind the microphone, has actually helped therapeutically help me to get my thoughts those. together. Yeah. Because um, I always say we all have some stories inside of us yeah. to tell. Yeah. And, and, and you know it. Being behind the mic is able to help me release them yeah. in a certain way that can articulate in a book. Yeah. So um, that's that's, good, that's kind that's of what works for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, where can our audience find you? Look lovely. So um, Instagram style by fashion fiend, um, and then my Facebook Timothy Boato, oh, full okay. name, and then uh, my website timothybuato.com. Okay. 
It was such a pleasure having you here oh, today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This thank, is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us today here at Desert Wood Days, and we will catch you next time. Thank you.